Hey guys, Michael here with Do It Justice and welcome to today's video. Thanks for joining us on our next video in our DIY solar power series. Today we're going to be covering how we wired from our custom combiner box down through the roof of our RV into the sub bay where we have our solar charge controller. Now if you see this little black wire following me around, it has nothing to do with the solar power system. That's for my little lapel mic <laughs> so we can get some good audio. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into the topic today. I'm going to show you how I got this all wired. This is the custom combiner box that I talked about on last week's video. And as you'll remember, I said there are eight lines coming in from the solar panel. Four of them are negative lines and four of them are positive lines. The negative lines go to the negative bus bar and the positive lines go to the positive bus bar. And each of the positive lines are fused to make sure they are safely wired. As you'll notice, there is a single larger negative wire coming out of the bus bar from the negative side and going out of the combiner box. And you'll notice there's also a single large positive wire coming out of the positive side of the bus bar out of the combiner box. Now the reason these wires are so much bigger is because it's taking all the power from the four panels and since I have them wired in parallel I'm quadrupling my amperage so instead of the wires needing to handle about eight to nine amps it needs to handle north of 32 amps. And it's always better to oversize your wires so that you don't constrict the energy coming from your solar array. It's very important that you get the wire sizing correct. Also, you'll notice there is a green wire that passes through the combiner box. It does not interact with anything in the bus bars, but that is a grounding wire coming from the solar array, and that goes with the single large positive wire and the single large negative wire. It goes through this tube and down through the roof of our RV. I will dedicate an entire video to grounding, so don't worry about that green wire yet. I will get to that in a future video. But now that we know it goes through the roof of the RV, let's jump over to where I have it entering through the roof of the RV and going into the RV itself. All right, guys, this is where the wires enter through the roof of the RV. Now, keep in mind, there is a ground, a positive, and a negative wire going through this tube. The reason I have it going through the tube is to add not only extra weatherproofing, but also to prevent any fraying of those wires uh, so there's no exposed wires uh, that I have to worry about when it comes to the system. Now, also, notice that this thing is here to waterproof that entry point, that hole that was in the roof of the RV. Right here used to sit an old antenna that we just took out of the RV and that's where we decided to wire our solar wires down through but you'll notice that this thing right here is um, actually an attic vent uh, component I, I actually don't know what it's really meant for I just went online and looked for anything that was weather resistant that could waterproof the area where the um, wires went down and this is what worked out perfect. This is where you have to get really creative and kind of customize your system to work best for you. But this has worked really, really well. Not only does it waterproof the area, but it also keeps bugs out because there is a um, grate or a metal, a metal like screen here where I cut out using wire snips to let this hose go through. And so it keeps bugs out at the same time as waterproofing that area. So I'll link this little product in the video description below if that's something you're interested in using. Again, it's not specifically for solar, but with these types of applications, you just got to get creative. Okay, guys, we are in the over cab area of the RV where the wires come down through the roof. So as you know, that black piece up on the roof is located right above this. The wires come down through here and into this PVC pipe so it doesn't just look like bare wires coming in. And we've got that wired down back over there and back behind there. You'll notice it wires down and you'll see a green wire, the ground wire, and then the positive and negative wire there. Those all go all the way down here through this little entertainment center down through the floor of the RV. Now, I did have to drill a hole through the floor and then also through the sub bay to get these wires to the charge controller. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to drill a hole through the floor into the sub bay that we're, we've got the charge controller down in. And once I get that hole drilled through, I'm gonna show you what I'll do to the aluminum edges and as well as the hole itself. Okay guys, I'm here in the sub bay where the charge controller is and I wanted to show you where the wires come down from the floor of the RV 
through this PVC pipe to protect the wires from that sharp metal stuff right there. I've got the negative line here, the positive line here, and then the ground wire here. So those are those same three wires that we had wired down through the RV. And you'll notice that I have the positive wire fuse. Make sure you get a proper size fuse in your uh, positive wire. And both the negative and positive wire go to the solar charge controller. Now you'll notice this bulbous uh, joint here and that is actually a splicing piece that I had to use because when I calculated my wire size, I did not take into account the amount of length that you lose when wiring copper wire or any type of metal wire. The wire itself will never be straight like a tape measure, so you always need to add about 20% to your calculation so that you don't end up with a short wire that you have to splice uh, to make it to your solar charge controller. So that's a really good lesson learned. It's definitely not ideal, it's still safe, um, but I hope that helps you guys not make that mistake too. All right, let's jump over here to the charge controller. I have a TriStar MPPT 60 amp charge controller. This is a Morningstar brand and what this is is a uh, MPPT charge controller which can account for differences between 12 volt, 24 volt, and 48 volt differences between the battery bank and the solar array. If you have not seen my video on solar charge controllers, make sure to check that out up in the upper right hand corner. Uh, but I also wanted to mention that in this charge controller I have these PVC uh, pieces here to also protect the wire from these sharp metal punch outs. So these are just kind of some tips and tricks, but it gives you a good idea of how this is wired to the solar charge controller. Now you may be wondering why I have the solar charge controller in this sub bay right here. And the reason is, is because I, you want the solar charge controller as close to your battery bank as you possibly can. And you'll, as I go through this series, you'll realize the battery bank is in this um, sub bay right here. You'll realize that I have all of this positioned the way I have it positioned because of where all the other components lay out. So you need to be aware of where you're going to be putting your inverter, where you're putting your batteries, where you're putting your solar panels, so that everything wires together really, really smoothly. But that gives you a good idea of where the charge controller's at, how I've got it wired from the combiner box up on top of the RV down here to the solar charge controller. I hope this video helps you guys out and gives you guys a really good visualization as how you can connect all of this stuff together and really some things to think about when wiring from your combiner box to your charge controller. Okay, if you guys like this video, make sure to hit that like button down below. Also, if you have any questions about this particular setup, again, this is our way of doing it. Uh, there are definitely other ways you can do it, but just make sure that it's wired safe, fused safe, and do whatever works best for your specific situation. But if you have any questions about our setup, hit me up in the comments below, and I will do my best to answer those questions. All right, guys, I hope you're having an awesome day, and as always, I will see you guys on the next video.